In today's video, I want to talk about keel lift. And I've been wanting to do this video for a while. You know, one, because I wanted to understand it better myself. And two, because I didn't think there was really a lot of good information out there on how keel lift really works. And so when you check out, you know, your typical sailing books, you know, they say, oh, the keel provides lift. And, you know, there might be an appendix in the back that talks about some aerodynamics, but I really don't think they get into the details of how keel lift actually works as the boat is moving through the water. And so that's what I want to talk about today. And so I did a video a couple weeks ago about uh, leeway and how leeway is the drift of the boat to leeward um, because of the sideways force of the wind on the sails. And what counteracts leeway is lateral resistance, which is provided by the keel. But how does the keel actually provide that lateral resistance? And the answer is keel lift. So the keel or centerboard or whatever you have under your boat is a foil. And a lot of times you'll hear boat manufacturers refer to them as NACA foils, which all that means is that it's a foil that's been studied and certified by the National Advisory Committee on Aeronautics. And so when you think about like the Precision 18, both the shoal draft keel and the centerboard are both NACA foils. And so thinking about an airplane, right? So an airfoil, an airplane wing typically is flat on the bottom and then has a curve shape on the top. And that's because as the wing travels through the air, you want to generate lift going up to allow the aircraft to fly. Now on a boat, you want to be able to tack, right? And, and sail both on a starboard or port tack. And so you need a foil that will generate lift on either side in either direction. And so, the foil that is underneath your boat is a symmetrical foil. So what that means is that when the boat is traveling straight in a straight line, so say like dead downwind, um, it actually doesn't produce any lift because both sides are the same and so the forces are equalized. So it's not until you start sailing with the boat at a slight angle that it travels through the water at that angle and then produces lift on one side. And so that's the lift that the keel produces. So to really understand this, let's look at a diagram. So we'll start with the boat and then we'll add the wind direction and then the different forces on the sails. And then we'll look at the direction of travel of the boat. And then once we know the direction of travel of the boat, we can add the leeway. And so now with the direction of travel and the leeway, here's where the keel is moving. And so you can see that the keel is actually moving at a slight angle to the water. The water is flowing over the keel at an angle and that creates an angle of attack and then lift. And so it's the leeway um, as the boat moves that's actually creating that lift. Now, if you didn't have any lateral resistance, if there was no keel, then there would be a ton of leeway. Um, but even with the keel, there's still a little bit of leeway. And the reason for that is because, again, if you think about it, so if the, if the boat was able to travel straight through the water without any leeway, then the keel would not produce any lift. And so to produce that lift, you need a little bit of leeway. And so it's not until the boat starts to drift either, you know, two, three, four degrees through the water, that leeway, that you create the lift, the lateral resistance by the keel that counteracts that leeway. So the two forces always have to balance themselves out. So you cannot completely eliminate leeway. There's always gonna be some leeway because otherwise you're not generating the lift um, from the keel. Once I understood how the keel lift works, I immediately had three questions. Uh, one, can you stall a keel the way you can stall a wing? Two was how does such a small centerboard counteract all the forces of a giant sail? And then three is what happens when the boat starts healing? So let's talk about each one of those. So first, let's talk about a small centerboard versus a giant sail. So, you know, you've got a lot of sail area and of course, you know, you have wind that is moving at whatever, 20 knots. Um, and so that generates an incredible sideways force that the lateral resistance provided by keel lift um, has to counteract. But the difference is, is that water is eight, over 800 times more dense than air. And so a very small foil can create an immense force. And so the keel, even though it's, you know, the centerboard or keel is very small, it creates a ton of force. And if you think about it, right, so if you're running down the street through the air, through, especially through still air, 
um, that doesn't take as much energy as it would to say run in waist deep water, right? So you're not going to be moving very fast in that waist deep water. And so similarly, even uh, at a very small angle and with a very small center board and only moving at say like four knots through the water, um, that center board is able to generate a ton of lateral resistance because of the density of the water. Now, can you stall out your center board or keel? Well, if you get the hull traveling through the water with so much leeway that the foil is at such an angle that you disrupt the flow of water on the windward side, then it will very suddenly stall out and stop generating lift. Um, now, it's going to depend greatly on you know, your hull shape and the type of keel you have. And you know, it's probably more likely in a, in a narrow fin type center board than it would be in like a full keel, um, but it's definitely possible. Now, what happens when you start healing the boat? Well, when you heal the boat, the keel or center board is going to be at an angle. And so the lift created is going to start being in a, both a horizontal component and a vertical component. And it's only the horizontal component um, that is counteracting the leeway. And so you're going to start losing efficiency of your keel. Now, the good news there is that at relatively shallow angles, um, the keel still stays pretty efficient. So just looking at the numbers, at a 10% heel angle, the keel is about 98% efficient. At a 20 degree heel angle, um, it's about 94% efficient. But at a 30 degree heel angle, it's only 87% efficient. And at a 45 degree angle, it's only 71% efficient. And so you're losing a lot of um, lift generated by the keel by healing the boat excessively. And so 25 degrees really heel angle is where you're going to start seeing after that is where you're going to start seeing um, a huge drop off in the lateral resistance provided by the keel. And so that's going to generate a ton of leeway. Well, I hope you found this helpful and as always, thanks for watching.